Hey guys, welcome to Meals with Maria and a Walmart Thanksgiving. Ta -da! That's right, this time we're doing a Walmart Thanksgiving. Last week I brought you a Dollar Tree Thanksgiving. My goal was to go to Walmart and spend $20 to bring you a Thanksgiving of your dreams. I spent $22.17, so I went over budget a little bit. Your choice, a few things could have been switched out and pulled out, and you can do a Thanksgiving for $20, I guarantee it. Today we're just gonna spend that extra $2.17, just make it a little bit over the top and make things a little crazy. It is my goal to show you guys that you can do Thanksgiving on a budget and have really, really good food for your family. Thanksgiving at Walmart can be done for $20 or technically it can be done for free. I do wanna share with you guys that Ibotta does have a deal right now. And if you haven't used Ibotta before, that is an app that connects to your phone. You download it, I'm gonna put a code in the description box box below that should get you $10 after you fulfill your first rebate. But if you go through the process that Ibotta brings you through, it will give you a free turkey breast, a free thing of stuffing, a free thing of cranberry sauce. All you have to do is purchase the items, follow the instructions on the Ibotta app, and you will get a rebate for, of money that you can redeem for gift cards or actually di link directly to your bank account. I've done that, so I get cash directly to my bank account once I use Ibotta and get rebates back. So I do wanna share that with you guys. The reason that I am doing a $20 Thanksgiving and not doing a free Thanksgiving is because some people won't have access to that and I wanna make sure that anybody, regardless of whether Walmart's out of the turkey breast or doesn't have the things that are on the Ibotta app or perhaps somebody doesn't have a phone or computer, I wanna make sure that everybody has access to this Thanksgiving. In addition to that, I'm also gonna be using just my stove and oven for this. So I don't wanna use any kitchen gadgets or things that we wouldn't normally have. I don't wanna assume that you have an Instant Pot or a Crock Pot or an air fryer. We're gonna go super simple, old fashioned Thanksgiving here. Just not to make any assumptions and make sure that absolutely anybody who has a stove, oven, and a Walmart in $20 can make this meal. If you are struggling this holiday season and you don't have the $20 to spend on a meal, please reach out to your local church or food pantry. They are going to be there for, to help you. And if you're not struggling and you have a few extra dollars to donate or share, I encourage you to buy an extra item when you head to the store for your holiday meal this Thanksgiving. Imagine if it's just an extra can of cranberry sauce or maybe just duplicate all of your non-perishable items and donate them to your local food pantry. I know that people in need will be so thankful. All right guys, I'm excited to share this with you and I'm actually excited to make this food. So let me show you what I got. Here is everything that I purchased for our Thanksgiving dinner tonight. So the big item, the item of the day is our frozen turkey. It is defrosted, it's thawed now. Now, this turkey came in at 68 cents a pound and was $9.11 for 13.4 pounds. If I could have, I would have just gotten a 10 pound turkey but this was the smallest that they had. So had to go with it. That took up a big chunk of my budget. So my intention was to do $20. I did spend $22.17, but I think that it was pretty much worth it. I don't really, you could really cut out any of these things if you wanted to, especially like this whip topping, but we'll get to that. So I bought some eggs. This was $1.17. I could have cut out a little bit of cost had I bought maybe half a dozen eggs. I think that's like 67 cents. I did want 12 because I actually wanna be able to use some of these for breakfast the next day. So I just thought ahead and I'm trying to come in with like a little bit of a more inexpensive or say you have more people. I mean, you can feed a lot of people with a 13 pound turkey and then uh, 12 eggs if you are making deviled eggs like I will be. Two sweet potatoes and these total 98 cents for two. I have these chips. I got this bag of chips. It was like $1.68 and then you got 75 cents off on Ibotta. So these came in at 93 cents, but say you don't have Ibotta for whatever reason and you can't use that, they did have like Pringles and stuff that were the Walmart brand for a dollar. So you could still get chips 
for around a dollar. Carrots, these are 82 cents a pound. Margarine is 84 cents. Potatoes, five pounds for $1.77. Cranberry sauce, this is like a big upsell for me. It was $1.28. I felt like that was very expensive for a can of cranberry sauce. Then sour cream, this is a dollar. Honestly, you have an extra, you know, a few extra bucks. Buy the full container of it. This is, you pay more for the eight ounce container versus a 16 is an insignificant amount more. But because we're trying to keep this to very minimal cost, I bought the dollar one. Turkey stuffing, we will be making our own gravy from this turkey. So we don't need any gravy mix. So I forgot to put these in at first. And then scallions, these are 50 cents. This is cheaper than buying an onion. So that's often what I buy when I'm doing a challenge like this because you're just trying to keep your, your pennies down. I got milk, that was $1.27. If you could find a smaller container of milk, I definitely won't need all of this milk, but that was the smallest container I could find. And look, Dan broke into it, like what the heck? I was like, did you drink that milk? He's like, yeah, I put it in my coffee. I'm like, that's for something special. And then for dessert, okay. I wanted to bake a pie so bad. Like, I'm like, what is, what is Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie? But pumpkin pie or like pumpkin or even pumpkin pie filling is, it's expensive. Especially when you only have $20. And then either you can buy a pie crust or make one, but I mean, you're talking about like $5 just for the pie. So I don't, I, my intention was just to buy two and get apple and pumpkin, but they didn't have that. So we did sweet potato and peach. And then initially they they had switched out my pumpkin pie for this chocolate cake. And I was like, why? Why? When I, I went into the store and I was like, yeah, sweet potato. Like, why would I not, why would you not switch pumpkin for sweet potato? But who even knows? So I ended up picking up the sweet potato, but they had switched out these two. So we have peach pie, chocolate cake, and sweet potato pie. I think for four people, you could probably swap out one of these and take it out. So you could definitely get to the $20 mark. And then I also bought this whipped topping for, I think it was 84 cents. So that is everything we purchased. So for appetizers, we're gonna do some chips and dip, deviled eggs, and then we're gonna be doing some potato salad cups. For dinner, we're obviously gonna have our turkey, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, carrots, gravy, stuffing, cranberry sauce. That's like a lot of food, I'm excited. And then for dessert, we're gonna have our pies. Let's get cooking. So since there's no pies to bake today, we just get to get right into it with the turkey. I'm just gonna cut it kind of open in my sink. I did make sure to clean up my sink really well before taking the turkey out in there, but I find that this is the cleanest and easiest method for doing it. And then I'm gonna be using a recipe from Taste Better from scratch, and it is a easy, simple, no fuss turkey recipe, which is awesome. I was just trying to pick something that was kind of lower in ingredients and just very simple, easy that anybody can use. So I just wanna take out the neck of the turkey inside here. And then there's also the giblets, which are in the backside. So if you're not familiar with cooking a whole turkey, make sure to go in there and pull everything out. I also wanna let you guys know that I took my turkey out three days from before cooking this in the freezer and I actually did end up running it under some cold water to really make sure that it was fully defrosted. So it does take three, four, five, depending on how many pounds your turkey is, days to defrost. So just consider that before buying a frozen turkey and make sure that you have ample time to defrost it. So here you can just see, I'm really going to town with the margarine. Uh, I wanna get kind of in those flaps there. You see how I kind of open up the side of the turkey? I'm actually putting margarine underneath the skin. This will help the turkey to be very, very moist. I kind of like using the margarine just because it's so soft and it's easy to just kind of massage into the bird. This makes the bird you know, taste really good, get really crispy. It also gives a really nice base for the herbs to stick to. So here I'm actually just using the bottom of the scallions and putting them inside the cavity of the turkey. For this recipe, I am not going to stuff it with stuffing. If you cook it turkey with stuffing, it does end up cooking for longer. And I personally don't like that because then you cook your turkey for longer just to cook the stuffing and it can make it dry. So I'm just using the ends of those scallions as my onion. And if you had some celery or a lemon, I definitely recommend putting that in. We just don't have that today. It still tasted delicious. And so I'm just putting a sprinkle of some pepper, salt, parsley, rosemary, and then sage and thyme, kind of just rubbing that all over the bird. You can just sprinkle it as I did, probably used about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. You really can't go too crazy on this. I mean, it's herbs, it's the skin of the turkey, it's gonna give it flavor. 
and it's gonna be delicious kind of no matter what you do. Once the bird is fully dressed, I'm just gonna tuck the wings underneath the back of the turkey. I find that this helps them from getting dried out or burnt. And then I'm gonna tuck my little drumsticks back into this little plastic thing. This is totally fine for cooking in and it keeps your bird close together so that it is juicier when it comes out. For this recipe, I'm cooking my turkey at 325 degrees for 13 to 15 minutes per pound. So my turkey took a little over three hours. I was lucky enough that the turkey had a little timer in it. So whenever that timer popped up, I knew it was done, but you're gonna to wanna to look for an internal temperature of 165 degrees if you do not have a timer. Here, I'm just gonna get started on hard boiling my eggs. So I put my six eggs into a small pot and I'm gonna cover them with about an inch of water on top of them. And I usually just use my steamer, but since I'm trying to go with our stovetop cooking method, I'm gonna show you how to do them on the stove. I'm just gonna heat these over high heat until they come up to a boil, at which point I'm gonna turn the heat off and put a cover on the pot. I'm gonna let them sit for 10 minutes and then pour them into an ice bath. While those are cooking, I'm gonna start peeling my vegetables. It is important to just invest in a Dollar Tree peeler. You can get as many of these as you'd like. I try and have three or four rounds so that when I have people coming to help at Thanksgiving time, I have plenty of people that can peel. I honestly just really like the Betty Crocker Dollar Tree one, so that's why I'm recommending it to you guys. So I'm just gonna peel my potatoes. I do have five pounds of potatoes, which is more than I actually need for my mashed potatoes alone. So I'm going to make a twice baked potato. I know I said earlier that I was gonna make potato salad cups, but going through the recipes, I just changed my mind and I think the twice baked potatoes would be better for us given our ingredients. So I'm just gonna peel enough to make our mashed potatoes. And then I'm also going to boil some potatoes in with that that have the skins on so that I can make the twice baked potatoes. And I'm actually gonna leave three potatoes so that we can have those tomorrow with our breakfast. I'm gonna make a turkey hash, so I'm gonna use our leftover eggs and our leftover potatoes and be able to make breakfast out of ingredients 100% from what we had tonight for dinner. Now I'm just gonna cover these potatoes with water and bring them up to a boil and cook them for about 15 minutes until they're tender. Mashed potatoes are awesome for making ahead at Thanksgiving. You can 100% cook them ahead of time and then reheat them right on the stove by just adding a little bit of extra milk as you go just to kind of rehydrate them. But you can absolutely make them ahead, put them on low, and then just stir them when the time comes so that you have a nice, warm, fresh mashed potato. I feel like Thanksgiving is a multitasker's dream. So you have to think about a lot of things and getting a lot of things done in a short period of time kind of all at once. So my eggs are still on the stove, my potatoes are still on the stove. I am now going to peel my sweet potatoes and I realize that my eggs are about to come off. So I go and get an ice bath for those eggs and plop those eggs straight into the ice bath. That is what will cool them down now that the 10 minutes is up in their hot water and they should be perfectly cooked. I should mention that my mashed potato recipe and egg recipe and everything will be posted below in the description box. I'm using a mashed potato recipe from Food Network and I'm also using a sweet potato recipe that is very simple. So our sweet potatoes are just going to be kind of diced into, I would say ice cube sized, and then we're going to boil them and mash them. Basically they're a whipped sweet potato, but they're very minimal and simple ingredients. They still taste delicious. For my carrots, I am just going to peel and slice them diagonally. I am using a recipe from a acoupleofcooks.com for perfectly sauteed carrots. When I'm looking for recipes, especially in a situation like this where I have minimal ingredients, I am usually searching simple, easy, basic, and looking for recipes with as minimal ingredients as possible, but with high star ratings. So you can usually find things that really highlight the ingredient, without adding a bunch of things you would have to purchase. Are you ready for a Thanksgiving dinner? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. What do you, what's your favorite for Thanksgiving? Hold it. Really? Yeah. Nice, all right, go play with daddy. Guys, how adorable. He got all dressed up to go out and work on the barn with daddy, too much. And cheers, it is caffeine time. We're about halfway through cooking this dinner and I needed a little pick me up. So carrots are chopped, sweet potatoes are chopped, regular mashed potatoes are cooking, the turkey's in the oven, and I'm about to start on some appetizers here. 
So into a half a cup of my sour cream, I'm mixing a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, quarter teaspoon of onion powder, quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of dill weed, and one teaspoon of dried parsley. Into that, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of chopped scallion, and I'm just gonna put it in the fridge and kind of let it all melt together. This dip ended up being phenomenal. It was really, really good. So just know if you have sour cream and a bunch of spices around, you absolutely can make a dip and it can be very inexpensive, especially if you have to kind of rush to something and you're going to someone's house and you're like, what am I even going to bring? If you have sour cream and you have herbs, you are ready to go. No problem there. At this point, my potatoes have finished cooking. So my peeled potatoes, I'm just going to put in this large pot. It's actually the pot I boiled them in. So two for one, you know, use something so you don't have to do more dishes. And we're just going to add three tablespoons of margarine, one cup of milk, and about a tablespoon of salt. Definitely do not hesitate to taste this as you go. I actually implore you to taste it as you go because you need to add more salt if necessary. And also as you're mashing it, you might need to add more milk if it seems too dry. It kind of depends on how many potatoes you have and the consistency of the potatoes. I'm just using a hand masher today, but if you wanted, you could put it into your mixer and use the beaters on the mixer to mash the potatoes, and that definitely brings you a creamier potato. But like I said, we are going old school today, and we're just using the hand masher. I honestly like them this way anyway. It depends on you know your total preference, whether you want like a chunkier or a creamier potato. Once these are mashed, I'm just going to leave them on the stove with a cover on them. And when we are ready to kind of cut the turkey and everything, I'm going to put them on low, mash them around again, and add more milk if needed. Now I'm going to work on my once boiled, once baked potatoes, as I'm going to call them. I noticed that earlier that they are actually boiled and then I will bake them. So I'm just going to slice them in half and then carve out the insides. These were still very hot, so I may recommend waiting a little bit longer. I was just being impatient. I'm gonna be adding two scallions sliced up very thinly to the insides of the potatoes, as well as the rest of my sour cream, which is about a half a cup, and two tablespoons of margarine. In the end, I did decide to add these bacon bits that I had gotten at the Dollar Tree. I kind of thought, well, they're kind of part of my pantry items. Getting those little tiny bacon bits from McCormick are very, very inexpensive. So if you have them, definitely add them. If you don't, it is 100% okay. They weren't going to make a huge difference to it. I just figured since I had them, I would use them. As you can see, I was just using a potato masher to mash up the insides. And now I'm just going to stuff the shells. I'll be baking these in the oven at the 325 that the turkey's on. So I'm just sliding them in right above my turkey in the oven for about 10 minutes and it will heat them up just fine. At this point, it had been a few hours, so I just wanted to check on my turkey and she or he is looking good. Now I have already peeled my eggs because that's boring to watch, but I'm just showing you that I cut open my eggs and they are perfectly cooked. It could not get any better than that. So I'm just gonna slice my eggs in half and put the yolks into my Pyrex measuring cup and place the others on a plate. Now, super important when making deviled eggs, if you do not have mayonnaise on hand, you can make mayonnaise out of eggs and oil. So if you have eggs and oil, you can absolutely make mayonnaise. I will post a video down below where I do this process and it turns out amazing. So do not fear, you don't have to buy the expensive Hellman's mayonnaise. In this case, I only needed two tablespoons, so I did not want to make mayonnaise just for that. I feel like there are a thousand deviled egg recipes out there that range from extremely complicated to extremely simple, so I tried to find the simplest recipe that I could with, again, minimal ingredients, and these ended up tasting phenomenal. So you really don't need to go too crazy by adding a thousand extra ingredients. Mayonnaise, salt, and some mustard will do it for you. And honestly, mayonnaise and salt is just fine as well. When you're not using like a pastry filler or something like that, I feel like you just gotta get your finger in there and <laughs> use it to fill the deviled eggs. So that is the scientific method for filling deviled eggs when you don't have a, uh, what is it? Like a pastry squeak, I don't even know what the word is, but 
Gotta, just got to kind of get in there and try and make it look pretty. And then I'm going to top these with a little bit of paprika. If you have it, use it. It looks really cute. I mean, I don't know if it adds too much to the flavor, but if you don't, it's no big deal anyway. These still taste good and they still look really cute. So for our pies, I did just want to kind of arrange them in a cute little way. So I'm just taking them all out of the containers and then slicing them into little pieces. So I figured it can almost be like a chip and dip. So we're just gonna take our little pieces of pie, place them around the plate, and then in the middle, I'm gonna put the whipped cream. So the, or whipped topping, I guess. So the whipped topping goes in the middle and then you can kind of take a piece and dip it. Did you buy this turkey? Yes, I did. So after about three and a half hours, my turkey was done and doesn't she look beautiful? So I'm just gonna pour the fat from the bottom of the turkey pan right into our gravy separator. Now, you can kind of see here, I actually had the turkey in the pan. Probably not the brightest idea. Next time I would just pull the turkey out and then pour the juices into the separator. So I'm gonna recommend that for you guys. Just put on another plate <laughs> while you pour it out. And then I'm actually gonna deglaze the pan. So the pan without the turkey, has a lot of really good juices in it. So I'm gonna pour about a cup of boiling water in there and that's just gonna pull all of the stuff from the bottom of the pan, all the really, really flavorful drippings off. And then I'm gonna pour that also into our gravy separator. Right now we are about to have some appetizers. So I'm actually gonna be setting my turkey aside. So we're just gonna cover it up with some tin foil and keep it warm for a while. It is finally time to enjoy some of the fruits of our labor and have our appetizers. It was a really nice day out on this day, so we were able to enjoy these on the patio. You can see the twice baked potatoes. I poured some chips around our dip here and our deviled egg. My kids are obsessed with deviled eggs, so they ate most of those. And we really, really loved the dip and the twice baked potatoes were pretty good as well. After relaxing for a little bit and enjoying some food, my mom went in the other room and played a game with the kids while I worked on getting the final pieces of the dinner finished. So here you can just see I am adding the carrots to about a tablespoon of olive oil and covering them and cooking them for four minutes over medium high heat. When the four minutes is up, just take the cover off, add about half a teaspoon of salt and saute, stirring frequently for three to four minutes. These carrots turned out phenomenally. They cooked up so well. I'm doing nothing fancy with the stuffing. I'm just adding four tablespoons of margarine to a cup and a half of water as the instructions say on the package and bringing that to a boil, then pouring in our stuffing mix. At that point, we're just gonna take it off of the heat and let it sit. After five minutes, fluff with a fork and it's done. The same time I got my sweet potatoes started, so I forgot to mention, but I put those on with about a quarter cup of water, covering them, and boiled them for about 10 minutes. At this point, I'm just gonna strain them out, but keep them hot for sure, so pour them right back into that pan. Mash them with two tablespoons of margarine, about a half a cup of milk, and I'm just using my potato pasher, masher again here. I did forget to add cinnamon, so at the end here, I'm just sprinkling in about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. That is really your preference. I feel like cinnamon you can never go wrong with. My son absolutely loves cinnamon, so I try to add a little bit extra always. I'm just gonna mash those up, and that's pretty much gonna give us our whipped and fluffy sweet potatoes. These were phenomenal. They're so, so good. You don't really have to do too much to sweet potatoes to really make them very flavorful. One of the last steps to getting dinner ready and on the table is actually making the gravy. So this gravy separator is awesome. If you do not have one, seriously, remember to get one before Thanksgiving. I will have one linked for you. It separates the fat from the gravy perfectly so that all that really brown, good, flavorful stuff goes into the pan and the fat stays out. So this recipe is my mom's gravy recipe. That's why I was so glad that she was here today. She's making the gravy for me. So she says it's about two heaping teaspoonfuls of uh, flour and you just wanna sift it and then whisk it. The key is that you're whisking it over medium heat the entire time until it thickens. This gravy turned out so good. It is no lumps in it. It has so much flavor and that's really all you have to do. So just whisk and whisk until it's ready. 
point, there's only two things left to do. Carve the turkey and get everything on the table. Wow, what a whirlwind. That was a lot of fun and that was a lot of food. We kept saying, I can't believe it's only $22 for all this food. Needless to say, it's the next morning, got my coffee. Where's my Grays fans at? Because it's Grays week. Comment below if you love budget Thanksgiving meals and Grays Anatomy, like me. I hope you guys enjoyed that and got a lot of helpful tips for your family. I have so many leftovers. So I'm gonna be making a leftovers video for you on Friday. So my $5 Friday is gonna be a little bit different this week and you're gonna see a bunch of leftovers recipes with turkey. I had half a turkey, are you kidding me? You can eat, I pretty much have my whole meal plan planned with turkey, mashed potatoes, everything we had, we have plenty of food. So don't miss that. If you're new here, do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell because otherwise you're not gonna see those videos and I know you wanna find out what I did with all my turkey. Generally, I do budget meal videos all the time. You're gonna wanna find out what kind of crazy things I'm doing with five bucks, three bucks, 10 bucks. And these are repeatable things. That's the key here, guys. I wanna make sure this is something that you guys can do at home and something your family's actually gonna eat. If you saw anything in this video that you wanted to purchase yourself, any of my cooking supplies or anything like that, I do always link all those in the description box below so that you can easily have access to them. As a matter of fact, I'll even link this mug. Making this Thanksgiving, using Walmart ingredients for $22 was a pure pleasure for me. So thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to give it the thumbs up to support the channel and I'll see you guys soon. Holy moly, I almost forgot. If you like this video and you wanna see another Thanksgiving for only $20, guess what? I made one at the Dollar Tree. So go check it out. I'm gonna link that right here and I'll see you soon. Where my grays, where my grays, where my grays fans. Do, 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 do.